If we look back, what we see is that as far as drug therapy is concerned, we have been escalating the treatment tremendously. So there is a significant proportion of women today who get, in addition to their surgical treatment and their radiotherapy treatment, they will get chemotherapy, they will get endocrine therapy, and this can sometimes be as long as 10 years. On top of that, some women, uh, as you know, also get targeted therapies like trastuzumab, perhaps the standard of care for her 2 positive breast cancer will include a second anti her 2 monoclonal antibody soon. And it's very likely that in a few years we will also use some targeted drugs in combination with endocrine therapy, such as the CDK46 inhibitors, for example. And I've always been impressed by this escalation because what I've seen in the field of surgery and radiotherapy over the last two decades is definitely huge efforts at de-escalating treatment, of course very cautiously in selected women. And that was a little bit uh, the message of my talk. So we see that our colleagues from surgery and radiotherapy are doing all these efforts in a very successful way because a large proportion of women today don't have to undergo a mastectomy, don't have to undergo an axillary dissection. Some selected women have their radiotherapy done in one day. And we are there with these very aggressive treatments. And what uh, the message I tried to convey was that, um, of course, systemic treatment plays a very fundamental role because it is given to eradicate macrometastasis. So it has an impact on survival, probably a bigger one than the local regional therapy. But we have very good examples that this escalation only benefits a small proportion of women. And I took the example of the great drug trastuzumab, one of the best drugs we have seen for breast cancer in the last uh, 15 years. Even with trastuzumab, when we look at the long-term results, we realize that some women didn't need the drug because they did very well with chemotherapy alone. About one third of the women relapsed in spite of trastuzumab. And so it looks like about 10% of women derive a very significant benefit.